You are listening to Fierce Feminine Leadership, episode number 196 with money mentor, Denise Duffield Thomas. Welcome to Fierce Feminine Leadership, the success podcast for women in business. Each week, we feature interviews and advice to help you step into your power and lead your way. Now, here's your host, women's leadership expert, Eleanor Beaton. Hey there, Fierce Ones. Eleanor Beaton here, and welcome back to another episode of Fierce Feminine Leadership, the success podcast for ambitious women in business. I'm your host, Eleanor Beaton, and really excited to bring today's episode to you where we're going to be focusing on cultivating a powerful money mindset. Now, in my household, really in my life, I would say the, the one of the biggest influences for me was my mother, Manu. So Manu is from the Fiji Islands. She was a teacher when she met my father. And for the early part of their relationship, she was the primary breadwinner. And they, of course, started their relationship in the Fiji Islands, where she is from. They then moved to Wales, um, where I was born. And in order to really make things work, they decided that my mother was going to stay at home and raise me and ultimately my brother and sister, and that my father would be out in the workforce making the money. And on the one hand, that worked, but my mother was a truly independent woman. And I think for many years, she was actually out of the workforce for 18 years. For those 18 years, there were many times in which she missed the independence that comes from making your own cash. And I can remember her saying to me as a teenager, you know, I think she was frustrated with my dad. They'd had a disagreement about how to spend money. And she said to me, Eleanor, money is power and don't forget it. And I never have. Um, While money does have the capacity to control our lives in a negative way, the reality is that money, I see it as a form of currency, as a form of energy. And I welcome as much of it into my life as I can and try to do great things with it. And really excited for today's guest because, you know, on this show and in my work through the training programs that we offer and my work with women leaders and entrepreneurs, we definitely talk a lot about money, about negotiation, about pricing, about getting yourself into a position for those high impact, high influence promotions that that really uncover or unlock new salary caps for you. But one of the things that we don't talk about as much is the idea of money mindset. And that's an area where today's guest is really one of the world's foremost experts on money mindsets for women. So Denise Duffield Thomas is a money mindset mentor for the new wave of online female entrepreneurs. Now, if you're not an entrepreneur and you're listening to this interview, I think you're still going to get a lot out of it. Because some of the things that she discusses, some of the most common money blocks, are actually just as relevant and applicable to women working inside the corporate world as those working out of the corporate world. Her best-selling books, Lucky Bitch and Get Rich, Lucky Bitch, give a fresh and funny roadmap to create an outrageously successful life and business. She helps women release their fear of money set premium prices for their services, and take back control over their finances. She's an award-winning speaker, author, and entrepreneur who helps women transform their economy class money mindset into a first-class life. So this is a fun conversation. We're going to get into some of the most common money blocks that hold us back from earning what we're truly worth. She talks about, really takes us behind the scenes of how she has evolved in her money mindset the link between financial empowerment and feminism, and some really juicy behind-the-scenes looks at her business and how she has grown it into a program that has seen thousands of women around the world really go through and see a big impact. So lots of fun here. Can't wait to bring out Denise Duffield Thomas. But before that, let's get a word in from our fierce sponsors. Inspiring communication is the hallmark of the world's greatest women leaders. When you know how to elegantly and persuasively share your message in a way that people will hear and act upon, nothing can stop you. 
Eleanor Beaton here, and I want to warmly welcome you to a free mini course that we're going to be hosting called How to Find Your Million Dollar Message. In this free mini course, you will learn the exact formula that made Sheryl Sandberg's book Lean In such a blockbuster bestseller and how you can find your million dollar message. I'm going to teach you how you can get booked as a paid keynote speaker, even if you don't have an agent or best-selling book yet. And finally, I will share some insider secrets about how to quickly build a global brand and set yourself apart as a woman of influence through speaking. Whether you are looking to grow your business or step into your next level of leadership inside the corporate world, This training is going to give you what you need to help you elegantly and persuasively share your million dollar message with the world. To sign up to get access to this free mini course, all you need to do is go to eleanorbeaton.com forward slash message. That's eleanorbeaton.com forward slash message. I'll see you at the training and I can't wait. Denise Duffield Thomas, welcome to Fierce Feminine Leadership. I am really pumped to be here because I love the topic and I'm really excited for some of the juicy convos I know we're going to have. Totally. So, you know, one of the things that um, anybody who enters into the world of Denise Duffield Thomas knows is that you're an expert on money mindset. Where does your fascination with money mindset originate? Where and when? Oh, how far back can we go? Um, because I, I did not grow up with, with money at all. And I actually saw all the women in my family be really stuck around money because they didn't have any financial independence for themselves. So I actually think my fascination and love for what money can do started from a really young age because I saw it in my family where they were stuck. Um, and I, I wanted to start my own business from a very young age. Cause I thought, well, that's how I can make my own money. Or I actually wanted to be, I was like, I want to be in business. But for me, that meant I'm going to sit at a desk at the typewriter and wear a suit with big shoulder pads. And of course. you know, it's going to be, yeah. Heels. Um, so I, yes, absolutely. And I started um, my first business at eight and I made zero money out of it. Like all my subsequent, like next kind of businesses because I had massive money blocks and I wasn't able to ask for money for what I did. So I knew from a young age, money was the key to freedom, but I had to uncover a lot of stuff for myself. And once I did, I actually um, didn't teach money for a long time. I, I, I became a life coach and helped people with their goals and things like that. And then I was like, oh, I wasn't alone in this. Everyone's got money blocks. <laughs> and so I went, oh, maybe this is where I should be uh, teaching. And I decided to go all in on it. So, you know, I I'm, can't wait to get to this topic of money blocks. But before we get there, I'm curious to know, how do you define a healthy money mindset? Oh, that's such a great question. Because it's not about perfection, by the way. Um, a healthy money mindset is not an absence of blocks or an absence of fear. It's um, about allowing yourself to receive money uh, in ways that feel really good for you. But so you can be, do and have everything on your dream board. It doesn't mean you're never going to be triggered by money again. It doesn't mean you're ever going to, I don't know, never going to feel like a bitch for setting boundaries with your clients or you're never going to feel fear again. But it's about dancing forward with it anyway and allowing yourself to prosper from your skills and talents. I love this definition that it's about allowing yourself to receive money f- easily and freely in a way that feels good. It was funny. I was remember um, about a year ago now, I was out having um, a drink with a client and uh, she went to pay and I said, no, 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 I can pay. And then I, and then your voice actually was in my, was in my ear. I could remember here a video or something where you described not allowing people to pay is actually another form of money blocks. So, you know, you talked about growing up with, with massive money blocks, doing your own work, seeing money blocks in play with people that you were coaching. How has your money mindset evolved, you know, um, since that first, you know, business at eight and really to where it is today? What would you say are have been the big shifts that you've made in your money mindset? The biggest one for me is realizing that it's ongoing work. 
that it's going to be something you're dealing with forever because being in business can be really scary um, and f- that I wasn't alone because I think every woman is like sitting there thinking, well, I'm the only idiot who can't charge for what I do. You know, I'm the only person who gets scared when I have to send out an invoice. I am the only person who um, is sabotaging myself. And it's not true. I, I see lots of women do it regardless of how, actually regardless of how they grew up. It's not even a matter of, oh, you were poor, so therefore you have money blocks. Women who grew up with a lot of wealth can have money blocks as well. So I think that's the first realization that I had was like, oh, I'm not alone in this conversation. This is really, really normal. And that's the first realization I want everyone to even get. It's like everyone has money blocks. But what's the difference between someone who can prosper anyway is is having the tools and support to to go through it and the awareness to stop those behaviors. So I, I think that people probably inherently get what a money block is, but I'd love you to define, you know, money what a money block is. And particularly for the women entrepreneurs who are listening, how are some of the most common ways that you have observed money blocks sneaking in to our everyday lives in in you know personal lives and in business as well? Yes. Oh my God. And it is so sneaky. So a money block is just anything that is stopping you you from making the money that you want or from from prospering or earning money from what you do. Um, it can show up in lots of different, different ways. It can show up as procrastination, resistance, sabotaging behaviors, conscious or unconscious. You know, when you're like, I'm totally sabotaging, you know, finishing my book, you know, when you know when things like that are happening. But then there's the unconscious sabotages where you don't even realize that you're holding yourself back. So, I can give you some practical examples as well. There's a massive belief that a lot of women have that you have to work really, really hard to make money. And that can be true whether you grew up rich or poor, by the way, because it's and it's deeply ingrained in our society, especially American society. You know, you have to work really hard and you have to burn yourself out and you have to be very productive and all that kind of stuff. It's very ingrained. You have to be busy. You know, that's big for women too. You have to be busy. And so this belief perpetuates a lot of things for us. So in your personal life, it might perpetuate as doing a lot of things that you don't want to do to keep yourself busy. In your business life, it could be resisting hiring someone that you know could really help your business or grow your business or insisting on doing everything yourself, even when you really shouldn't. Like you should have seen some of my first graphics, by the way, (laughs) DIY. That held my business back. But I had this belief that if I'm not doing all the things myself in my business, then I really don't deserve to make any money out of it. And you know what? That's a really sneaky one, the working hard one, because it will come up at the start of your business and it will stop you from making money very early on in your business. But that one will live with you. And that's why you need the constant support. I actually dealt with this one again recently because my hubby works in the business now. And I... I know it's a goal for a lot of women to retire their husbands and to, you know, not even to work together, but to retire their husbands. And um, I thought, I can't tell anyone about this, even though my community has that as a goal for themselves, because it hit me again that, well, they're going to think I'm not working hard if, if, my, if my husband's in the business. They're going to think I don't deserve my success. They're going to think that, oh, well, of course she's successful. successful. Her husband does everything. So that belief and the beliefs that you have to uncover for yourself, they will show up in small ways and big ways, and they will show up at the start of your business, and they will continue to show up at different points of your business too. Well, you know, you made a very interesting argument once about the link between money blocks and the and the creation of passive revenue inside the business. So this idea of, you know, so many women entrepreneurs, particularly who are in the kind of coaching consultant expert space or solo entrepreneurs dream of quote unquote making money in their sleep um, versus trading you know dollars for hours and you make an argument that the the passive revenue model avoiding creating that in the business is actually another form of money block do I have that right and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it because it's fascinating it's huge because it doesn't feel like you worked for it and I mean even the name passive income it goes against the grain we're like no that has to be like active earned income. You know, I had to work <laughs> hard for that. So I I created an ebook. Um my well, I was gonna say oh, that was my first ebook. My first ebook was in two thousand and four. It was about internet dating tips for men. 
Um, that was my first foray into Wow, where is it stuff. now? I love it. <laughs> it's lost to the world. Um, but so one of my first kind of passive income projects, I sold my ebook for $10 on my site. And every time someone bought it, I wanted to vomit. I wanted to call them up. First of all, to call them up and apologize because I'm sure there were mistakes in it and apologize for it not being perfect. And then I wanted to read it to them over the phone to earn that $10 because I felt so guilty about it. So how did you work through that? Because, you know, I think that, um, like you say, this is not, you know, a Denise Duffield Thomas specific phenomenon. I mean, this is something no. <laughs> showing up for lots of people. Um, how did you how did you work through that? Because I bet you there are, lo- there are lots of women right now who are avoiding creating passive revenue because of this underlying insidious belief that you've got to work hard to make money. How did you work through it? Well, first of all, some people might not think that that's the reason. You know, it's because so the first thing is awareness, awareness of why you could be acting in ways that are sabotaging your success and what you what you say you truly want, which might be freedom in your life. So that's the first step is the awareness, because some people will be like, well, no, Denise, it's not me. It's the economy or it's my clients or people just don't want to pay for things anymore or, you know, they don't want to pay for things they can get for free or so you could sit down with someone and they could give you 50 reasons why they're not creating their passive income sources. Um, but the real gold is going into your beliefs behind it. Why is it not safe for you to create passive income? Why is it inappropriate for you to create passive income? So that's, that's really the first step is the awareness of the beliefs that underpin it because then you can, then you can do something about that. You know, I teach a, a variety of belief shifting kind of tools and you can train your brain to think something different but without that awareness at first you're just going to think it's other things you're going to be like oh well wait when I have time I'll do it or when my business makes more money then I'll have more time to create things that make more you know it's like it's like this chicken and egg thing that we're constantly in I'm like well when my business makes more money then I'll get childcare to help me spend time on my business it's like your business is not going to make any money without any time and space you know, on it. Um, so yeah, that's a funny one about the passive income because for a lot of us, you know, that's the thing that would create the foundation, the freedom, um, peace of mind, abundance, but it's the thing that we resist the most because of these money blocks. Well, there's so many interesting things that I'd love to delve into here, but you know, you talk about this, this idea of making it easy and getting help. How does the the conundrum that some entrepreneurs face, especially in the early goings, where you need help and you might not have the financial resources at that moment to hire the help you want, um, have you seen this come up? And and is this necessarily, or or is it often related to a money block? And how have what sort of, sort of practical insight can you give to people who are in that situation? Are they blocked, or um, or is that just the the challenge of the entrepreneur, the, the conundrum? Well, you know. If- of course, there there's some realities about being an entrepreneur. At the start, you have to bootstrap everything. You know, you have to do everything yourself. However, what I see people do is a lot of busy work. They don't go for those things that are um, the things that will make them money. You know, and we talk about income producing activities. You know, things that will actually make you money. And instead, and I I can only say this because I did it myself. Um, instead, we spend hours looking for the perfect hex code for the background of our website. We, um, which otherwise known as procrastinate branding, because we're trying to make our branding perfect before we've even had a client. Um, so we're doing all this busy work, but we're not doing the thing that will actually make us money, which is make an offer to somebody. Um, just make an offer. Um, someone yesterday said something like, "Oh, how can I create my business now so I can sell it in ten years' time?" And um, Mark said, "He, because Mark's in the boot camp now too." He goes. Just get a client, get your first client, get your next client and just deal with that, which made me laugh because that's what I always say to people. It's like, just get your first client, see if you like it. Don't stress about, you know, making it perfect right now. So I think that's the reality for a lot of us as um, entrepreneurs. We're not focusing on bringing the money in. We're doing a lot of the, the busy stuff around it. Now, speaking of the focus on the Money Bootcamp, the Money Bootcamp is, of course, your signature program, the one that you're best known for, perhaps. Yeah. Um, and what's so interesting, you know, and I was preparing to, to interview you and really taking a look at your business, it really is your signature. Um, it really is your signature program. 
and your business model, at least from the outside, looks very, very simple. And you've referred to your lifestyle as the chillionaire lifestyle. Now, I know that there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but one of the things that occurred to me is this idea that you've achieved what so many entrepreneurs yearn for, which is focus. So it's very clear and focused how to do business with you, you know, what it is that, you know, we get attracted to the message and here's this one thing um, that makes the most sense for a person to enroll in. Um, many entrepreneurs struggle with bright, shiny objects. I offer this and I offer this and I offer that. Is lack of focus in your business, is that another money block, do you think? Yes, it really is. And I was not immune to it either. I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about Get Hitched, Lucky Bitch, my soulmate, my soulmate book. And, I... <laughs> and I had a soulmate course because I was like, oh, I can teach people how to manifest. I'll teach them to manifest health and like men and money and everything. And I honestly, I never wrote it, but I remember talking to a friend and saying, let's collaborate on Get Fit, Lucky Bitch because she was a naturopath and I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I get it. I totally get it. But what I've been really good at is reining myself in, in a little bit. So my motto is all roads lead to boot camp. So I can talk about everything. I mean, as long as it's for women and, you know, money and business, but I'm like all roads lead to boot camp. But you know what I was, even at the start of my life coaching business, when I was just charging um, $75 or a pack of six that made them $45 each. I I was like, all roads lead to my coaching sessions. So I would do a blog post and at the end it would be, okay, here's a link to book in with me for a coaching session. And so you, this, when you do that and when you focus it, you're focusing all your energy, energy and it does lead to one abundant thing instead of trying to be everything to everyone. And then you get a little trickle here, a little trickle here, a little trickle there. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have other offerings necessarily. You know, you can have ebooks or you can have, you know, little small courses, but all roads lead to boot camp. And that's been extremely helpful for me to um, tame that natural entrepreneurial urge to go and do all sorts of random stuff. And I, I look at um, Marie Folio, who has a, um, a B, B school, Marie Folio's B school, and she's had 30,000 people through that. So I tell myself until I've made like had more people in my boot camp than Marie, I have to focus <laughs> after that. Once I hit 30,000, maybe I'll go do get hitched lucky bitch again. <laughs> I love it. So it's like a, it's like a focusing mantra that, that creates, a, I suspect a sense of ease and focus inside the business. Uh, yes, because it doesn't confuse your audience either. Like it gives them a purpose of where to go, what to do, how, what, how can I, be served by by you. Um, I used to be the go-to girl for everything, so I would confuse people, and people would say, "Oh, can I need?" I, literally, my first couple of coaching clients was help me find a husband, you know. And but there's courage in saying no to things like that, you know. Of saying, you know what? I remember making the decision to not coach people in jobs anymore who didn't want to be entrepreneurs because I'd always be thinking, "Just quit your damn job and become an entrepreneur," but they didn't want to. So it was real. That was one of the first pivots. I was like, oh, I just can't coach entrepreneurs. And then I had a whole bunch of guys and I was like, I don't enjoy coaching men. Oh, I just coach female entrepreneurs. And then so you just try it and but refine. Don't be afraid to refine and then say to people, I actually don't offer that anymore. It, and it hurts your ego if you've always been the go-to girl for everyone's problems. But it really focuses you and then it, it really creates a lot of abundance for you too. Now, let's talk about boundaries because, you know, when it comes to overcoming money blocks, asking, you know, for what you want, saying that all roads lead to this offering. No, I don't, you know, do this type of work. It's this type of work. You strike me as somebody who has, whether naturally or through hard work, um, created a uh, a fine sense of boundaries for yourself. Can you can you share a little bit about that and 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 whether that was easy for you and and how that evolved? It evolved. Um, some of it evolved naturally. Some of it evolved out of necessity, and some of it evolved out of friends telling me um, or showing me what they had done in their in their life and their business. So the ones that came just naturally for me, it was like, oh, that doesn't feel good anymore. You know, it was like, oh, it doesn't feel good to coach people who aren't entrepreneurs because I can't relate to them. Oh, that's an easy boundary to put in place now. 
Some came out of necessity because of painful experiences. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> right. everyone can understand. Where you're like, you have a nightmare client who has no sense of like boundaries and they just, you know, and then you're like, oh, that really sucked. Maybe I should put some terms and conditions in place. And then, so the necessity ones are where you just go, that sucks. I never want to have this happen to me again. What can I put in my life that can, that can help this? And then the other ones that have evolved, I remember a friend sitting down and she goes, um, Denise, you need to get out of your inbox because I was answering all of my customer service questions. I was having back and forth with people arguing about things. You know, someone was like, I can't believe you said not to try and manifest a lottery win. I went back and forth with that girl like eight times. <laughs> Um, and my friend said, you know what, you just, you need to upgrade, you need an assistant. So I was like, am I, am I allowed to have an assistant? Like what? Um, and she goes, yeah. And then they can check your email. And I was like, what? (laughs) Check your email for you. Um, so that was for me was a, a conscious choice to set boundaries around how people could contact me. And then I was like, wow, that frees up a lot of time and energy for me to create things for my greater tribe instead of, you know, just serving people one-to-one and putting the structures in place so people could be taken care of like that. So for me, I always look, um, if someone's new at setting boundaries, look at what's not working in your life at the moment and look what could be fixed and could free up a lot of time or, or space or energy for you. It might be firing a client, might be taking a service off that you don't want to do anymore. It could be setting a boundary to make your life easier. And then you can evolve from that and you can go, okay, it's not just the stuff that's not working what stuff could really free me up? Like what could be a really symbolic upgrade? Um, it could be getting a cleaner. It could be, um, yeah, just, I don't know, having other boundaries in your life that, that can be really small. I, I remember a very symbolic boundary for me was saying to friends and family that I wasn't available during the day for them. And I would just be like, I'm sorry, I'm working. I'm sorry, I have meetings. I'm sorry, I have clients. I started setting that boundary before it was even really true. You know, I didn't have clients, but I was like setting that boundary so I could make space for those clients. Mm, interesting. Now, you know, when it comes to to overcoming money blocks, you talk about tools and support, and obviously, you know, your the the money boot camp has has served thousands of women in this regard. What can you share with us in terms of some of the most powerful steps or tools to think about? in addition to the one that you've laid out really clearly, this idea of getting to the beliefs, you know, underneath the blocks, but what are some other tools that may be surprising that can help people overcome their underlying money blocks? Yeah, I I have a very easy practice that I recommend people do and it's tracking your income um, and tracking your freebies that you get or the free stuff you get in your life. And this can be done in many different ways. When I first started it, um, my mentor, Kendall Summerhawk, she said, just write it on a piece of paper, every single penny that comes into your life. And I just had a piece of paper on my desk and I would write down if I sold an ebook for $10 or I found a penny in the street or whatever, and I would write it all down. That process, I still do that today, by the way, but I, I do it on a spreadsheet now. And I also have a free app on the app store where you can track it. But the second part of that is tracking free things that come into your life. So if your friend buys you a coffee, put that on your value tracker. Um, If you get a discount on something you were going to buy anyway, put it on your value tracker. Um, The reason you do this, this is not an accounting practice, by the way, this doesn't replace your bookkeeping. This is an awareness exercise and it's an appreciation exercise. So the awareness is a couple of things. It's to show you that abundance is coming to you. It might show you that you have um, judgments around the money. You might be like, well, this is real, but this is fake money. A lot of people do that. They're like, oh, but PayPal money isn't real money. It's like, yes, it is. It is real money. You might think that your partner's salary is real, but your business income is not real. So tracking brings up all of that stuff for you. And then the value piece is serves a couple of purposes. One, to help you feel abundant when your income might not be abundant yet because we know that's so important, right? The mindset piece of feeling abundant is really important. But then the second thing is, is sometimes it's a bit of a wake up call to see how you might be living, living your life in a kind of a bartering type economy where you, the universe sends you heaps of free stuff, but no money. And it's a bit of a wake up call for sometimes for people to go, Oh, I'm really taken care of by the universe. Or I like really pull things out of the bag when I need to. 
but actually I want to have some real money in my life. I want to feel empowered around actual cash. Um, so I think that's a, it sounds like it's a really basic thing, but it actually is a very, very symbolic action that you can take that will have far reaching impact on your life and your income. Now, what do you think the connection is between, you know, opening ourselves up to, to more abundance and, and I'm thinking particularly about women to really, you know, uh, enhancing our money mindset. What's the link between that, you know, financial empowerment and an empowered attitude around money and, and women's empowerment? You know, where do you see well, those coming yeah. together? Well, for me, female empowerment around money comes down to independence, financial independence, being able to make choices for ourselves. And we, we can all see from either our own lives or from um, the media what happens when women don't have choice in their lives and it's heartbreaking, you know, and we can also see what happens when women aren't in positions of power in the world. Um, men make the decisions for us. So I, I think I come at it from a real feminist point of view for sure um, of women being able to have power and choice in our life. But I also think that sometimes us as women, we have conflated this in our head of we have to be really deserving of it or we have to be really good girls I think that's really ingrained in us we have to be really good we have to be really good girls for us to be worthy of the money but at the same time we worry that that having more money will turn us into these greedy rich people because that's maybe all we've seen um, instead of realizing that the planet needs us the planet needs women um, to have more money because it's being proven that the choices we make when we have more money in our life enrich our communities and enrich our planet in so many ways so I kind of see it as uh, women upping our, upgrading our relationship with money is kind of a bit of a moral imperative for the planet right now. The planet kind of needs rich women to shape the world. And so we kind of got to step up and be okay with that. That doesn't mean every woman has to be the next female billionaire because that's not what it's about. It's the collective um, of women having more money, having more choices, spending money in ways that – enrich our planet, enrich our communities. And uh, that's where I feel really fired up around women and money. Yeah. And now you have made some decisions in the, in, you know, in recent months to shift how to shift your brand, to shift your business even a little bit. Can you share more about that and, and where that comes from and why you're doing it? Well, when I started um, my business, I wanted a gimmick, you know, I was like, I need a gimmick. I need a costume. And I was a dancer growing up and I've always been an introvert, but putting on a costume was really comforting to me. I don't know if anyone, rec you know, resonates with that. And I was, you know, so I was kind of shy in some ways, but it was more introverted. But I was a dancer. I was a performer. So I would put on my costume, put on my makeup, put on my eyelashes. I'd be ready to go. Don't forget um, the eyelashes, okay? Don't forget those. Very important. <laughs> and we used to have this mantra we'd say to each other before we go on stage, Teeth, tits, taps. <laughs> so it was like smile, stick your tits out and get your tap shoes ready. Um, so when I started my business, I was like, what's going to be my gimmick? Because I feel really naked being an entrepreneur. I don't want to be visible. I don't want people to look at me. So I um, created this brand called Lucky Bitch, which was really fun and cheeky. And it's kind of a bit of a play on the fact that when you create success in your life, everyone thinks it's luck, even when it's not. So, you know, I firmly believe you create your own luck. But then, you know, people will say, oh, you're so lucky. So I went, yeah, let's call it Lucky Bitch. That is my costume. That's going to, you know, make me feel perkier and more confident. And it's been a great brand. And then recently I, I realized, I was like, oh, I don't feel like I need this gimmick anymore. And I loved the brand, but it's it's time to evolve from that place. And I feel way more confident in just being me, which is me being an introvert, me being, you know, imperfect and all that kind of stuff. And I also made a shift too, where I realized, first of all, I was thinking, oh, I don't want to talk about money mindset at this moment in time. This is so superficial. It's so meaningless, you know? And then I went, hang on, this isn't about creating money for money's sake. This is about creating richness in women's lives so they can touch other women's lives and, and men and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I had a new appreciation for my work. And I went, oh, yes, this is still really important. 
And it just coincided with me actually shedding that lucky bitch skin a little bit. Um, and I think when that thing that happens to you, and if it's happening to you while you're listening right now, just talk about it. It gives other women permission to be more authentic as well. And that's what we're all here to do is just to speak our truth and create richness in our lives and be a good person. I love, and I love that, you know, rich, empowered women will shape and change the world. It's, it's, it's almost a direct quote from what you said earlier, but it's, it's, it's so meaningful and so resonant to me. Um, Denise, thank you so much for sharing your insight for the contribution that you make. Where can our listeners go to learn more about you, the work that you do around money mindset for women entrepreneurs? Yes. So thank you for having me, Eleanor. And I actually just re- released a new free workshop. It's called Reclaim Your Money Power. And it talks about three really big mistakes that women are making right now. Um, and they have shifted from when I first started doing this work, by the way. And um, you can get that at denisedt.com slash reclaim, reclaim. And um, yeah, I'd be thrilled to hear if anyone's had any massive ahas from this. I'm all around the world, uh, the, all around the world, all around on the web um, at Denise DT. So that's what you can find me on Instagram, for example. Please like, you know, tag me, tag me in this and tell me you're aha. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Fierce Feminine Leadership. Be sure to head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. While you're there, leave us a fierce review. When you leave a review, your name is automatically entered into a monthly draw. Each month, we'll draw one reviewer to automatically receive a private coaching session with women's leadership expert, Eleanor Beaton. So remember, head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Then leave us a review for your chance to win a private coaching session with Eleanor Beaton. Go to eleanorbeatonpodcast.com and sign up to get your free cheat sheet the five critical leadership skills of seven-figure businesswomen. This free download will help you diagnose the exact skills you need to see major growth in your business and career. Head over to eleanorbeatonpodcast.com and get your free download today.